Courtney and welcome back to my channel. If you're not already following me, I am over on all the social media platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, Storygraph, and TikTok. All right, so today we are doing an unhaul video. So what is an unhaul? <laughs> so usually when I go shopping for books, I come back and do a haul video where I show you, hey, here are all the books that I got. But since I am on a book buying ban until next month, which is my birthday, and I want to buy more books for my birthday time, my week, whatever, I need to make some room on my shelf. So I am going through all of my shelves and picking out books that I think I won't ever read or I've read and don't think I'll read them again, or I don't even remember why I picked up the book in the first place. So I've gotten rid of books in the past. Like usually when I read books for the month, I decide after I do my wrap up video and, and post for you all, I decide which ones I want to hold on to, which ones I want to gift. And then the rest, I usually just drop off at a little free library down the street or somewhere nearby or when I go traveling somewhere. I'm, I'm used to getting rid of books, but usually like right after I read them. When I moved, I had to do some initial unhauling just to make things fit but since then I've acquired more books and we've run into a dilemma of sorts. So I'm going to take you through show you the before <laughs> of what my shelves look like. The after I think is probably going to look the same because I have some books piled up right now in front of my book cart and like around my shelves that need to fit back on the shelf and then we'll see. I am finishing up it's the third week of October right now so I'm finishing up my October Spoopathon reads, deciding which ones I'm going to keep from there. And then I already have my stack ready for nonfiction November. So those stacks aren't going to be touched right now. So we'll see. It's kind of sad, hoping that I can get rid of those. <laughs> they could still be great books, but I just can choose not to read them again or think they'd be better off at a Little Free Library. Fun fact, I just met the owner of the Little Free Library in my neighborhood. Her name is Cindy, and we got to talking a little bit. It was really cool. She has a lot of friends out in Florida that sends her like all these beach books like James Patterson and things like that. And I was telling her how after every month I usually drop off books there. And she was telling me about her neighbors. And I dropped off Hamnet like a few weeks ago, and that was like snapped up in a minute. And she said that her neighbor had picked it up, read it, and then put it back, and then it was gone again. So yeah, it was nice to meet another bookish member of the community, especially like down the street and something that I contribute to and engage with frequently. Anyhow, I am going to go through these shelves. I'm going to take you along with me. So come on haul with me if you haven't done this before. I don't know if I'm doing it right, but it's the way that I'm choosing to do it. I'm going to look at all my shelves and pick out books, read the synopses, see how I'm feeling about it, and then put it in a pile or put it back. So let's go. books that I am getting rid of. So some of these I've read, most of these I've read, others I've tried to read, 
and then a couple I haven't even looked at and I'm like no thank you so let's go through these shall we first book I have is the Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown so I love the Robert Langdon series he's an art historian that's what I graduated with if you didn't know from undergrad but first off this is the movie cover Ew, shiny, not a fan. And second of all, this wasn't my favorite in the series. I have two more on my shelves that I liked. This is not even the original. Angels and Demons is the original, and I like that one better than Da Vinci Code. This is the one I saw the movie first and then read later, but I like Origins and Inferno in the Robert Langdon series, so I'm gonna give this one up. Then we have Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. I've tried y'all with this one, and I've heard good things about it. I picked it up, I think at like a secondhand shop or like a library book sale or something and I was interested in it because like it's quoted a lot it's like a classic romance story I think and I feel that it was mentioned in The Proposal which is uh, the movie with Sandra Bullock and Ryan Reynolds this was Sandra Bullock's character's favorite book she reads it every Christmas so I thought that was kind of cool and I like liked her as a character even though she was like kind of mean and controlling in the beginning but I don't know I liked her progression and her her character her story arc so yeah I don't know I've tried maybe one day I'll come back to it or read it on my kindle or do an audiobook but it just wasn't working for me then we have A Version of the Truth by Jennifer Kaufman and Karen Mack. I remember reading this, I think I was like high school or early college, and I liked it because it was like a book about books, and I don't know, like I, I resonated with it at the time, like this girl was like trying to get a job, but then she ended up lying on her resume, working at like a university, and then like I also worked at a university, didn't lie on my resume though, but this one I'm like, I think I've grown out of this story or like don't think I can get any more out of it from when I had read it the first time. Then we have Judges Girls by Sharina Harris. So this was sent to me I think by the publisher to do a like post about and I did like a promote, promotion post on Instagram and I think it's very similar to like a Shakespearean novel like King Lear I want to say but in like modern contemporary times and I was like man nah, like King Lear was okay but I'm choosing to to put this one down because I I was somewhat interested when I got it sent to me by the publisher but then after I was reading the synopsis I'm like mm, maybe not so much then we have two more arcs that were sent to me bottled goods by Sophie Van Leeuwen this was actually like brilliant it's a it's set in Romania it has to do with like magical realism like the cover is super cool but I think this is one, it's like very unique. It's like very artist-like or it's just very unique. And I, I like that, but I think it was so like wild and um, like trippy in a way that I, I kind of want other people to experience it and talk about it. And I wrote a review about it and enjoyed it, but I don't think it's one that I would read again. Then we have another arc. This is this is All He Asks of You by Anne Eggs. Eggs, and this was like a collection of like letters from a child to their father, I believe. And it was like very beautifully written, um, but again, not one that I think I would read again, but hope that others would want to pick it up because it's one I haven't really heard of before. I've also wrote written a review for this one up on my blog. Then we have 500 Miles From You by Jenny Colgan. This I'd actually listened to on audiobook before, during, after <laughs> I had picked this up at the book loft up in Columbus, Ohio. And this was cute. It's kind of like a switch, like the holiday, but like an, um, a man who is, I think he was a nurse or like something in the medical field with like the army or armed forces and then another woman in London. So yeah, this is probably one that was cute at the time I listened to it on audiobook. They had two different narrators, which I always love when they do that. But since I listened to an audiobook, I don't think that I will be reading it in print form. Then we have The Gilded Years by Karen Tanabay and this I've spoken about a few times because I I love a good mixed race story about passing and like the complications of that and what that looks like but this one like aggravated me so much and made me so angry at I not her like she was doing the best that she could at the university that she went to but like her friends once they found out that she was black or like a light skinned black person so I don't want to keep it because it makes me so mad about how that probably does or did happen but yeah we had this for book club a while ago and I haven't really touched it since. Then we have 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher. This was gifted to me by my friend Natalie after grad school so that was like six seven years ago and this it's I am a lot of trigger warnings about suicide 
and um, like mental health and everything. So, and I'd started watching the TV show after I'd read this. Very, I don't know, like scary in like a realistic kind of way, like graphic. And I don't know, like it's it's told in a way that it is scary for, for people to know what people are going through, but I don't know, I think it was enough to go through it once. And um, yeah, we'll see. It is, it is, like it says, eerie, beautiful, and devastating. But I think it, uh, I don't know, it was a little bit too much for me personally, but I think there's a lot to be learned here about mental health. Then we have Outlander by Diana Gableden. This is not my only copy. This is just the one with the, the poster from the TV show on it. And I had gotten this from like a book swap, so I didn't even pay for it or anything. But I already have one version. I'm good <laughs> with that part of the series. It is one of my favorite series of all time, but that doesn't mean I like it less because I'm giving away this copy. I just don't need to. Finally, I have Ready Player Two by Ernest Klein, and I loved Ready Player One. Absolutely loved it. And then I won this from um, an Instagram giveaway. And while I was waiting for it to come, I had already started it on audiobook and it was kind of disappointing. So I haven't like touched this print version of it. I listened to the whole audiobook version of it and just didn't like it. And even though I like keeping series together, I just don't want to hold on. I want to have the, the series end after the first book and that's it. So giving this away because it just didn't live up to my expectations of it and how much I enjoyed the first one. So those are all the books that I am unhauling. There was 11. I'm sure there's more I could have done. As you've seen, like I, I hesitated with a few others that I put back on my shelf. I might revisit those later. It's kind of like the whole like minimalist or oh what's that that challenge of like the hat like does it make you happy a Marie Kondo kind of thing <laughs> of um like if it if you don't react to it within like 10 to 30 seconds or something then you get rid of it I don't know but I'm gonna give them a chance and then come back to it a season later and see what happens especially with knowing I'm getting more books they might be more exciting or once I get more excited about than the ones that are still on my shelf so who knows? Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up or comment down below any books you've unhauled lately. I'll be, of course, doing a birthday haul video in the next few weeks as I get new books to put in my shelf. But thank you so much for coming along. You can hit subscribe to get more videos from me. The notification bell will let you know when I post, usually on Mondays or at least once a week. And my social media is listed down below as long, along with my blog and website. So that is pretty much all I have. Have a great day and happy reading. Mm -hmm.